there we go. Yeah, it'll be faster to go through here. Man. What? Nothing, it's just... I've never seen anything like this, that's all. You mean the woods? Yeah. Never walked in the woods. It's kind of cool. <laughs> And here we are, entering Lincoln, or better known as Billstown. This will be the first part out of the four parts I'm going to talk about here that I think are the best parts of The Last of Us. Some people might look at it and just say that it, they're the most underappreciated. I, these are my personal favorite parts. And we start in actually my favorite, which would be entering Billstown. These four parts here all really have something in common, and I think it's that they're sandwiched in between moments of chaos. This first one in particular, we're right here on the heels of all of the madness that took place at the Capitol building and, and everything that happened with Tess. We're given a small moment here entering Billstown to catch our breath, not just the characters on the screen, but also the player, right? A lot of this game, you're running from checkpoint to checkpoint, heart pounding out of your chest, just making it out with your life, pressing triangle at the last second to put a shiv into a clicker's head as it grabs you up and throws you against the wall just making it out alive. Well, in this part, we don't really have to worry about them much. There are two clickers here over the hill, but that, that's okay. We'll, we'll forget about them for now, for the sake of this video. You get these moments here to, again, catch your breath before the race is right back on again, and we're running to the next checkpoint, getting to the next safe house, making it to the next building where we can slam the door shut behind us, right as our enemies are clawing at the door. And that'll happen here in Billstown, as we know. Billstown gets gets pretty rowdy. You know, you're going to see in this part here a lot of back and forth, and most of it is is started, initiated by Ellie. Ellie is very much ready to get to know Joel. Look at her. Just look at her. Look at that. She wants to know every single secret about Joel, his whole, his whole life story. Joel is not even remotely close there yet, so a lot of the, a lot of the cool little moments we're going to see here are really Ellie trying her hardest to get information out of Joel, just for no other reason, but she just very innocently wants to get to know Joel. Joel's not there yet, right, as we know. He will. He will get there in, in due course, but right now he's not. But it doesn't take away from the magic of entering Billstown. Billstown's really nice. It's not just the dialogue between them. It's the sunset, the beautiful hues there, the yellow, the pink, the orange, the birds chirping, the fireflies lighting up, the real fireflies. I mean, real fireflies. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I lost myself. That's all Joel's got for. Her. Yeah, I see that. And right, and again, that's that's pretty much Joel's default reaction to a lot of what Ellie says in these parts is just again a few a few words, and that's it. He's not giving her anything to follow up on. He's not doing anything to continue the conversation. He just wants to keep it moving. I'm not sure Joel remembers his first firefly. And I don't mean a kill. I mean an actual firefly. But. Again. He'll get there. Well, then we go find Tommy. Marlene said he's your brother? And more importantly, he was a firefly. He know where to take you. Oh, okay. He lives far from here, which is why we need the car. Well, even though these two barely know each other, you can already tell the slight disappointment in Ellie's voice whenever she hears that Joel's plan is obviously to hand her off to his brother and he won't be seeing it through. The bond and the connection between them isn't strong enough yet for her to like show how much she doesn't want that to happen, that she wants Joel to be the one to finish it. Um, and who knows, maybe at this point, maybe she doesn't really even care that much. She's going to care more as the story progresses, as their bond strengthens, but just a little sign of it right there. And as we enter the street right here, this is my favorite part. This is my favorite little subsection of these four parts. Billstown is my favorite, or entering Billstown is my favorite. This little street right here, I don't know what it is. It's just so well done. Uh, it's, it's the music. It's the sunset. It's the really tranquil nature of everything around you coming off the heel of all of the madness that took place at the Capitol building with the drop going wrong and, and Tess dying. And before 
all of the drama and action and trauma, whatever, all, all of that madness that's going to ensue here just a couple blocks over in Billstown, we're, we're given this really special little moment here where we can catch our breath as the characters on the screen catch their breath. The player gets to catch their breath as well. We're not racing off to a checkpoint. We're not shooting up a bunch of infected, though we did just have two clickers back there. No tall order, right? We're pros at that point, but, you know, no no horde of infected nipping at our heels. We have this really cool little part where we can just kind of explore with no agenda yet. No deadline. Wander around, take in the sights, take in Billstown. Get to understand the nuances of it. Get to hear some, some back and forth between Ellie and Joel. <laughs> gnomes. Yeah, those are gnomes. Man, I had an art book filled with these. I always thought they were super cute. <laughs> Not fairies, though. They creep me out. All right, man. <laughs> and that's all Joel can muster. And, and that's really what a lot of it is in this part here with, with in Billstown is it's a lot of Ellie really wanting to share and Joel being reluctant to share one or two word replies, the kind of stuff that we don't like to see. Um, whether that's in person or a one word text back, no, no one likes that. No one likes that, but that's all Joel's prepared to give right now. So it is a lot more Ellie trying to share and, and Joel, he's not quite there yet. And we got the pizza place here, pizza shop. Got a good little moment in here. Oh, look at that. Would you play this before? No. But I had a friend that knew everything about this game. Apparently, there's this character called Angel Knives who'd... What was it? She'd punch a hole through your stomach before kicking your head off. I was never a big fan of these things. I wish I could play it. Yeah, and just like the gnomes, uh, this is it <laughs> with the arcade game. The turning, obviously, Ellie's referring to Riley. We get that backstory and left behind. And Joel's really not going to find anything more out about Riley until the very end of the game, which is kind of sad because Ellie in this moment here, not long after she meets, Joel's already wanting to share stories about Riley. Now, I don't know if she was going to divulge, divulge everything about her relationship with Riley, but I, I can't imagine it would have taken that much longer. I mean, it just seems like Ellie really wants a friend right now, a, a confidant, you know, a father figure. It's what she's looking for right now. And again, Joel's just so reluctant to to provide that. Um, it, it, again, it's sad, but again, we, we also know that that's just who Joel, Joel's character is. Like, the moments that happen later in the game wouldn't be as special if Joel was so open with Ellie early in the game. It's it's the growth that really makes those moments special. Man, this is kind of sad. What is? All this music that's just sitting here. No one's around to listen to it. I don't know. It doesn't seem right. This is another one that I think is really funny in a moment, just showing how early days it is with their relationship and knowing like what Joel reveals to Ellie later about wanting to be a singer and then eventually on a day like this I would sit on my porch and pick away at my six string. I'm gonna teach you how to play guitar one day and you know I reckon you'd like that and then obviously going into part two he, he does teach her how to play the guitar. And we're in a music store here and Ellie's just showing an adoration of music and feeling bad that there's no one here to listen to all these albums. Joel's got nothing. Again, just like I said before, it's it's early days in their relationship, but I think it's safe to say that these two have future days ahead. And get the fuck out of my town. That was a close one, huh? <laughs> yeah, not one of our finest moments, but we made it out. Yeah. Well, just like the first entry in this little video here, um, this is uh, 
going to be another little section here that's got a lot of really cool little moments in it. Um, some good dialogue, uh, some good character building here, uh, especially as we have a couple comrades here with us in Henry and Sam. Uh, and just like entering Billstown, this happens right after a very uh, chaotic moment. Uh, it doesn't end in a death, unfortunately, like it does going into Billstown at the heels of what happens to Tess at the Capitol building. Um, but uh, this building right here and everything behind that door is pretty wild uh, a lot happened there um so uh we're gonna walk through the suburbs here of pittsburgh uh take a deep breath um the characters on the screen and us as the player as well <laughs> after everything that happened there at the very end uh so um buckle up here we got a couple cool moments here with henry and sam uh before we get to the next chaotic part up ahead so we gotta enjoy these moments while we can Just five when the cordyceps hit. My memory's pretty hazy, but I remember living in a neighborhood just like this. What do you remember? Uh, barbecues. Parents, they would throw these crazy big barbecues and invite a ton of people. You know, I remember the smell more than anything. Weird. This little trip here down memory lane from Henry is my favorite little dialogue moment in this small section between the sewers and the sniper. And it's because it reminds us that Henry did live pre-outbreak. And I think it's easy to forget that sometimes because Henry seems like a younger man, and he is. However, he still had a life pre-outbreak. And we see his memory get jogged here, and he gets on a nostalgia trip whenever he goes through this suburban neighborhood and sees a grill and it reminds him of being a kid and seeing you know uh, other kids playing and barbecuing and it bringing the neighborhood together where people would converse and talk and play and there's this really strong sense of community and you can hear like the hope in his voice kind of and i think that's the big difference between him and joel joel obviously being the other person in this little party of four that did live pre-op break joel has those memories but they're like repressed and and if certainly he like would ever like think about it he's certainly not going to like talk about it in front of anybody Be you know like the way henry does like henry talks about this stuff with like this like really like optimistic tone of voice where you know maybe things could be like that again someday right and we'll see a little bit further down the road like he actually voices that maybe kids can be kids again someday that's why i really like this part because it's cool to have someone in a group that is on the same side of the fence as Joel, where they did live pre-outbreak, but, like, he has a completely different perspective on, like, what can be accomplished here in the future, right? We know Henry. Henry's a man. He has hope, right? We saw hope when we first met them, and he showed Joel his, like, escape plan, and Joel was like, have you ever done this before? And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but he's going to try it again because he believes in his plan. Same thing whenever they leave the sewers, right? Henry looks ahead at the tower, and he's, you know, they're going to be there. I know they're going to be there, right? He has hope. And I think it's really impactful to have someone in a group that has that hope. And again, it's really like a contrast to Joel because Joel, again, those are the two people that live pre-outbreak and, and, you know, different time spans, right? Joel was what, 25, 30 years old? I mean, he was very much an adult pre-outbreak. Henry was just a kid. And I feel like you still kind of see like that youthfulness in Henry. Again, that hope whenever he's walking through a place that reminds him of being a kid again. And then he obviously has like his brother Sam with him. And Sam is very much a kid, right? 12, 13 years old. And I think he just really wants that for Sam. You know, it, it's, it's again, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's nice. It's like rejuvenating to have someone in a group like that so again i a little long-winded there but at the point that i'm trying to make is that just hearing henry talk about a good memory and hearing just like that optimistic tone of voice in him just really makes you like i feel it like like he's describing the neighborhood and like the event that's going on and i can just like picture it in my head like we've all we all can sit there and think about moments when you were a kid when you're five or six years old and Right? Maybe it's just like a simple thing like a grill that jogs that memory or maybe it's a smell or it's a sound and again, Joel, you're never going to hear Joel talk about that. At least not right now. Okay? Again, like I said, like going forward you will, but in this moment here, it's more like organic and natural for Henry to talk about that stuff in a positive light than it is Joel. So, again, I really appreciate like Henry's little trip down memory lane there. I always think that was like really really cool and 
again, it's just it's just something that just gives you hope, right? Even in this moment, even when we know what's coming next, unfortunately, in this moment here, it's just there's a lot of hope, you know, and I and I appreciate Henry for that. We'll shoot on sight. Lots of friendly people lived here. First few months after the outbreak, they had a lot of looting. Everyone got paranoid. You remember any of that, Joel? Yeah, everyone barricaded themselves in their homes. And supplies started running low. That's when you saw what people are really capable of. Now, Joel will happily talk about something like that, right? Like what people were really like and all the crazy stuff that happened or recognizing a hunter scheme as they enter Pittsburgh because he's been in on that before. He'll talk about that stuff. It's like I said, like back in the building there with Henry when he's talking about like the barbecue. Uh, that's the stuff that you're not going to see Joel talk about, but he'll happily talk about some negative stuff. Uh, we believe in you though, Joel. You, you, you'll change. Ellie will bring it out in you. Hi. Uh, no, no. You, you clearly got destroyed. How did I clearly get destroyed? That's practically a tie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There'll come a day where kids can just be kids again. Let's go. Okay, let me see if I get this straight. If you mess up your fourth down, then you give the ball to the other team? Right, it's called turnover. And if you clear the ten yards, then you're back at... First down? First down, that's right. Yeah, that's no, confusing. <laughs> you just gotta play it a couple times. It all makes sense. Well, I will be damned if Joel Miller is not teaching Ellie about football right now as we're about to enter the University of Eastern Colorado. Go Bighorns. Uh, this part right here is the third out of four really, really special moments and sections of The Last of Us Part 1. Uh, I think this is actually like the biggest jump in in like in Joel's progress and in, in, in their relationship, Ellie and Joel's relationship uh, that we've seen throughout, right? Bill, I mean, in the very beginning when we entered Bill's town, um, it, it's mainly Ellie <laughs> trying to learn about Joel, Joel not uh, reciprocating, giving anything back. Uh, and then we get to the suburbs with Henry and Sam and Ellie, and it's a lot of Henry talking uh, and reminiscing about um, his life, a brief life uh, before the outbreak, uh, and basically Sam and Ellie being super wide-eyed, Joel contributing a teeny tiny little bit, uh, and then we make the jump here to the university, uh, right there, we're instantly kicking it off with Joel telling Ellie the rules of football, how to get a first down. All right, we got a lot of gems here in this section uh, before we get to the nightmare level stuff that naturally is always waiting for us in the distance in the world of the last of us but uh but again we got some really cool moments here and some cool dialogue between ellie and joel as their relationship is starting to pick up a little bit starting to get joel to buy into the whole like hey you're not just cargo kind of thing like i actually do want to like see this through here and make sure you're all right so let's move forward here and let's see what else the uh the university has in store for us so these places People would live here and just study, even though they were all grown up? Yeah, study, party, and find themselves. Figure out what they wanted to do with their lives. What they wanted to do with their lives. <laughs> Such an odd concept, Ellie, which is so funny seeing Joel teach her this and talk about like what the concept of college is. Ah, yes. The idol. Oh, shit. I uh, wanted to interact Preach. with the bighorn. My bad. That's a giant ram. You guys were like some idol worshippers. <laughs> when it came to sports? Hell yeah. Ooh, it's getting chilly. It's that time of year. What about you? What'd you want to be? Uh, well, when I was a kid, I used to want to be uh, a singer. <laughs> Shut up. No serious. Sing something. Uh, no. Come on, I won't laugh. I don't think so. Joel, please. Have you ever been to one of these? What, the university? Yeah. <laughs> no, not as a student, at least. Why not? Uh, I had Sarah when I was pretty young. Were you married? For a while. What happened? Okay. 
Nope, that was it. Nope, that's it. Shut her down. Shut her down. Shut her down, Joel. That was <laughs> crossing into dangerous territory there. Ellie, Ellie was pushing. She was pushing it forward just a little bit more, inch by inch by inch. She thought she had she had her uh, her foot in the door there, and then Joel just said, "You know what? That is enough." Ellie, look, I laugh at that because it is a very abrupt halt and funny ending to their really nice and endearing conversation between these two as they're starting to open up with each other, and, and more so, obviously, Joel than, than Ellie. Joel's starting to reciprocate, and that is very nice. He's taken a humongous step and turned to Paige since Tommy's dam. When he made the decision to cancel the plans with Tommy and saying, you know what, I am the one that needs to finish this journey, he didn't just take on that responsibility for the sake of taking it on he really did in that moment decide that i'm going to change i'm not just going to finish the job here but i'm going to change because he could have continued the journey finished the job and been the same guy that ellie met back in boston and been stoic and not very giving unwilling to share but that would have been boring that would have been underwhelming it would have been disappointing to not see joel grow from that and he doesn't. He does the exact opposite, as we see when these two enter the university. He's talking to Ellie about football and what it's like to go to college and him wanting to be a singer. That's a huge step for Joel. This person's someone that means something to him. And that relationship is growing. And that's what these parts here are all about. All four of these parts. It's all about learning and growth from the person that you're on this adventure with. And Joel has shown that he's now willing to do that. And it's okay that he still has a line in the sand with regards to what he wants to share. It's okay that he didn't want to continue that conversation with Ellie there. Because what that means is that there is still room for growth. He's not a completely open book right now. He's opened the book up a little bit, absolutely. We've seen it through Billstown and the suburbs and now the university. And as we see going forward here, there is another step to their relationship. Well, maybe in all that research, they turn into fucking monkeys. Ellie! 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 Did you hear me? No. What? Look. Hospital. This is where we get off. Let's go, kiddo. You feel that breeze, huh? I tell you, on a day like this, I just sit on my porch, pick away my six string. You know, once we're done with this whole thing, I'm gonna teach you how to play guitar. Yeah, I reckon you'd really like that. What do you say, huh? Ellie, I'm talking to you. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure, that sounds great. Now, Ellie's clearly feeling very detached and distant and disengaged from everything that Joel's saying here, and rightfully so, right? Everything that, again, that she had just went through there uh, in, at the Lake Resort against David was, was traumatic. And, and, and again, again, that's what these little moments here are all built on, right? This being the fourth one. They always take place after something very, very dramatic happens, and we get a moment to, like, heal, rest up, grow, and, and learn from everything that's, that's happened. And this part's no different, right? But I want to focus our attention on what Joel says as he feels the wind blowing through that gorgeous head of hair right there. And it just takes him back to a time he was sitting on his front porch just picking away at a six string. And he tells Ellie that I'm going to teach you how to play guitar. And I reckon that she'd really like that. We get to a moment here where Joel, for the first time, isn't sharing like a fun little anecdote or explaining what a school mascot is. Joel is telling Ellie that I want to teach you how to do something, right? He's talking about their future, which is huge, right? We've not heard him do this yet. This is the part where we see that, that this is not no, long, is no longer just a, a you know simple cargo drop-off mission, and that's what it was for the vast majority of this story, but we now get to a point where you know Joel has fully looked at Ellie as his daughter and someone that he wants to continue to get to know and grow with, and he wants to, again, he wants to teach her something. There's a future there, right? Which is why I think this part here, to kick off the uh, the Salt Lake part, is, is so strong and, and, and really, really powerful. I've never been on a plane. Isn't that weird? Well, you know, dreams are weird. Damn, Joe, I thought we were making some progress there on the sharing part. <laughs> thought he could have offered a little bit more than dreams are weird. But hey, you know what? The, man, the man's growing. We'll be better. 
You gotta see this. What is it? You see this? Shh, don't scare it. I won't, I won't. What are you doing? It's all right. Come here, come here. Hey, Bill. Hurry up, Paul. Come on. Always got some serious Jurassic Park 1 vibes here. Uh, with Dr. Grant and Lex and Tim. With the Brachiosaurus. Where's it off to? Here, come on. Let's go. S slow down, kiddo. <laughs> come on. I guess Dr. Grant and Joel have their similarities. There's also that Jurassic Park reference in uh, The Last of Us Part 2. I wonder if Drachman was a Jurassic Park fan. Well, this part certainly needs no introduction. Obviously, this is a lot of people's favorite part of The Last of Us Part 1, and, and, and rightfully so. It's it's a sweet and innocent moment, and again, that's why, I guess, that's what all these four moments in the game have in common for me, right? Whether it's entering Billstown, uh, the suburbs in Pittsburgh, the university, and then entering Salt Lake, because we know Salt Lake... Uh, it gets a little dark <laughs> at a point here, not too far down the road from us whenever we enter the tunnels and, and through the end, but really everything up until the tunnel part and, and, and this really being the, the pinnacle of it is just a super special moment here where, again, nothing's chasing you. There's no checkpoint to run to. You're not exchanging bullets with a hunter or someone that's a uh, cannibal. Right, that's trying to end your life just because you're simply existing in their territory and you're standing in the way. These are these little moments in The Last of Us where you can just learn from the person that's walking next to you, whether it's Ellie, Henry, Sam, Bill, Tess, Tommy, you name it. That's why these parts are so cool. Nothing's chasing you, you're not hurrying, you're not objective or task focused. You're just taking your time. And when a game is, is so action-packed, and, and again, a lot of great action sequences in this game, right? That's, that's again, that's the other amazing part of this. But if you want to look at the quiet moments here, the, the four that we've done up to this point, including this part here, especially this part, yeah, that's why these are my, my four favorite sections of the game. Take it all in. Learn about the person that you're embarking on this journey with whether it's the beginning of the journey and maybe you don't know that much about the person that you're with or maybe you're at that like crucial part where you're forced into getting to know them more or maybe you're at this part here where you're totally comfortable with that person yeah and that's why these parts here are just so great Again, action sequences are phenomenal. There's no denying that, but I think there's something to be said about these four special sections of The Last of Us. I guess the warm and fuzzy stuff that uh, The Last of Us Part 1 is so, so damn good at, at providing for you as the player. All right, guys, if you've been able to endure and survive this video and you've made it to this point with me, I really appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, I, I love The Last of Us, as you can probably tell, just like a ton of other people. Um, we cover everything The Last of Us here. Please consider giving me a sub. Um, that way you don't miss anything here, any new videos with The Last of Us. 
Really appreciate that. Drop me a comment too. Let me know what you guys think. What, what do you feel about these four selections here that I've made? Would you take any out? Would you add any in? Uh, would you scrap the whole thing and completely pick a bunch of other stuff? Let me know what you guys think. What's your favorite parts of the game? Hope you guys enjoyed this here, and I will catch you all on the next one. Thanks for watching. Hey, Joel, I got something for you. Here. Maria showed this to me, and I, uh, I stole it. I hope you don't mind. you try I guess you can't escape your past <laughs> thank you